Hello students. Today we are going to learn bisection method. It's a very simple method which is used to solve the nonlinear equations. This method is also known as the binary chopping or half interval method. It is also known as Bolzano method. In this method, what we have to do is that we have to first take the initial approximations of root. Say we are given with the nonlinear equations and then for that nonlinear equations we have to find its root. So first we are taking two initial approximations say x1 and x2 such that f of x1 multiplied by f of x2 is less than 0. If this is the case, f of x1 multiplied by f of x2 is less than 0, then we can say the root of an equation or the roots of an equation lies between x1 and x2. The next x value, say x3, x3 is considered as the midpoint of x1 and x2. This x3 is computed. This x3 is basically the midpoint of x1 and x2. Then after computing this x3, there are three possibilities. Those three possibilities are, if this f of x3, when we put this x3 in the equation, in the nonlinear equation, if the value of f of x3 will come to as 0, then we have a root at x3. So then we say that the root lies at x3. Other cases, if f of x1 and f of x3 are of opposite sign, then the root lies in the interval x1, x3. Thus, x2 is replaced by x3. The other cases, if f of x1 and f of x3 are of same sign, then the root lies in the interval x1, x2. So now we will take an example and through that example we will try to understand how we compute the values of a nonlinear equation using the bisection method. Let's take an example. We have an example here where we are given that one of the root of a nonlinear equation x cube minus 4x minus 9 is equal to 0 lies between 2.625 and 2.75. Find the root correct to 4 significant digits. So it means we are given with an equation and we are given with two values where we have been given 2.62 and 2.75 so these are the two values and this is our equation for which we have to calculate the root and we have to calculate it up to the four significant digits so what we do is we will first start with x1 what is the value of x1 here we have x1 as 2.625 and the value of x2 is 2.75 so, we first of all put the value of x1, 2.625 in f of x. What is f of x? f of x is our given function. Our given function is x cube minus 4x minus 9. So, first we are putting the value of x1 here. So, this x1 will be equal to f of x1 will be equal to 2.625. We are putting the x1 value in this equation. So it will be 2.625 raised to the power 3 minus 4. What is the value of x? 2.625. So this 2.625 minus 9. That will be equal to, if you will calculate this, it will be equal to minus 1.4121. Similarly, you have to calculate for f of x2. For f of x2, what is the value of f of x2? It is 2.75 as it is given in an equation. So 2.75 whole raised power 3 minus 4 multiplied by 2.75 minus 9 is equal to 2.7969. That is if you are calculating the whole term, 
it will come as to 0 0.7969. Then we have to calculate x3. What is the value of x3? x3 is equal to x1 plus x2 divided by 2. x1 we are given with 2.625 and x2 is 2.75 whole divided by 2. When we calculate this it comes as 2.6875. Now we have to calculate f of x3 as we get the value of f of x3 as 2.687 we will put this value in f of x we will put this value in the equation which is given so the value will be 2.6875 raised to the power 3 minus 4 multiplied by 2.6875 minus 9 is equal to if you calculate this it will be equal to minus 0 0.3391 now at this step you have to check what is the value of f of x1 multiplied by f of x2 if the value of f of x1 multiplied by f of x2 is greater than 0 then you have to replace x1 by this new value x3 otherwise you have to replace x2 by x3 so here as f of x1 and f of x3 both of them are of opposite sign if you will see this is the negative sign if you will see here it is uh, f of x3 it is also the negative sign so negative negative is positive so both of them are of similar sign if both of them are of similar sign that means it will be a positive value when we will multiply them so that will be greater than zero if it is the case then we will replace x1 by x3 in the next iteration in this iteration we calculated the x3 value now in next iteration we will replace the value of x1 by x3 and follow the same procedure now in the next iteration what we are doing therefore we are replacing x1 by x3 the new search interval will become 2.6875 and 2.75. Now the value of x1 is equal to 2.6875 and x2 is equal to 2.75 for our next iteration. Now we have to calculate f of x1 the way we did in the first iteration. f of x1, x1 is now 2.6875. Now we calculate it as we are given with an equation. We are given with an equation x raised power 3 minus 4x minus 9. So we will put the value of x in this equation. When we calculate it, it is coming as minus 0 0.3391. Similarly, we have to calculate f of x2. f of x2 is 2.75. So again, we are putting this, this value in that equation. So we are getting a value 0 0.7969. Then we have to again calculate the x3. What will be the value of x3? It will be equal to x1 minus plus x2 divided by 2. As we have x1 and x2 in this iteration, we get these values and divided by 2. So when we calculate it, it is 2.7186. 2.7186 is our new x3 value. Now again, we have to calculate we have to compute for f of x3 we have to put this value in our given equation f of x3 is equal to f of x3 x3 is 2.7186 we will put it in the same equation 2.7186 raised to the power 3 minus 4 multiplied by 2.7186 minus 9 that is equal to 0 0.2182 now again we have to check for f of x1 multiplied by f of x3. If f of x1 multiplied by f of x3 is less than 0. See here f of x1 is a negative term. f of x3 is a positive term. When we multiply a negative term with a positive term it comes as a negative which is less than 0. When this is the case then we have to replace x2 by x3. Then the new search interval for the next iteration will become 2.6875 as it was there and 2.7186.
which is the new x3 value and we are replacing x2 by x3. So for the next iteration, you have to take these two values as x1 and x2. Now let's see what is in our next iteration. Similarly, in our next iteration, when you are doing it for the iteration number 3, it is again f of x1, you have 2.6875. So you are calculating it for f of x1. You are calculating now again it for f of x2. Then you are calculating x3 in the same manner you did in the previous iterations. Here we have x3 is equal to x1 plus x2 divided by 2. The new x3 value is 2.7031. When you get this value, you again put this in the given equation. Now we have to calculate f of x3. When we are calculating f of x3, it is coming as negative term minus 0 0.0618. Now again we have to check whether f of x1 multiplied by f of x3 is greater than 0. When this is the case, so we replace x1 by x3. So therefore here we are replacing x1 by x3. Therefore the new search interval will become 2.7031 and 2.7186. So in our next iteration, that means in our iteration 4, the new interval will be 2.7031 and 2.786. Again, you have to do the same thing. You have to here calculate the value of x3 and you are, when you are getting the value of x3, you have to compute it for f of x3. Then you have to again check whether f of x1 multiplied by f of x3 is less than 0. If this is the case, then you have to replace x2 by x3. When you are replacing x2 by x3, you get the new search interval. Then your new search interval will become x1 will be the same value 2.7031 but you are replacing the value of x2 by x3, the new value which you are getting here. So your new interval will be 2.7031 and 2.7109. Then for iteration 5. In iteration 5, what you have, you are having x1 as this value and x2 as this value. Again, you have to follow the same procedure. For You have to calculate f of x1, you have to calculate f of x2. Then again, you have to calculate x3 as x1 plus x2 divided by 2. And then after getting x3, you have to calculate. So x3 will be equal to 2.7031 plus 2.7109 divided by 2 which will be equal to 2.707. Now we have to compute f of x3. f of x3 will be equal to f of 2.707. That will be equal to 2.707 raised to the power 3 minus 4 multiplied by 2.707 minus 9. When we solve this, it will be equal to 0 0.0085. Then again, we have to check for f of x1 multiplied by f of x3. We can see here f of x1 multiplied by f of x3 is less than 0 because f of x1, the value of f of x1 is negative and the value of f of x3 is also negative. Now it will come to as uh, less than 0. Therefore, we replace x2 by x3. Similarly, in the next iteration, iteration 6, we have replaced it now x2 by x3. Therefore, for iteration 6, we will be having x1 is equal to 2.7031 and x2 is equal to 2.707. So, we will solve it again in the same manner and we will again calculate the x3 value. Then again, after solving this iteration, we will get that f of x1 multiplied by f of x3 will be greater than 0. So in this iteration, x1 will be replaced by x2. So for the next iteration, we will be having the values of x1 as 2.7051 and value of x2 as 2.707. Then in iteration 7, we will again compute the 
same thing but when we will calculate the values in iteration 7 we will get the value of x3 is equal to 2.7061 if you will see that in the previous iteration we were having the value of x3 as 2.705 and in this iteration the value of x3 is 2.706 and we were having in the question it was given that we have to check it for the four significant digit if you will see in this iteration the values 2.70 and the value 2.70 are same that means we are getting the same value for the next iteration now again when we will solve it for the iteration 7 we will replace x1 by x3 and we will move on to the iteration 8 we will do iteration 8 in the same way as we did the previous iterations iteration 8 in iteration 8 you will see that when you will calculate the values f of x1 will be equal to minus 0.0077 f of x2 will be equal to 0.0085 and f of x3 will be equal to 0.0013 if you will check here x3 we are getting the same value of x3 which we get in the previous iteration in the previous iteration iteration 7 we got the value 2.706 for x3 here also we are getting the value of x3 as 2.706 that means for the four significant digits the value is same for then when we will see for f of x1 multiplied by f of x3 this will be less than 0 therefore in this we have to replace x2 by x3 for the next iteration therefore in next iteration our x1 will be equal to 2.7061 that will be the iteration 9 and value of x2 will be equal to 2.7066 when you will solve it you will again see the value of x3 will come same up to the four significant digits see here again we are getting the value of x3 as 2.706 which is same as the value which we got in the previous equation 2.706 when we see when you will see after solving for iterations if x3 does not change in the next iterations you have to stop here and this x3 will be the root of your equation now if you will see from the for the previous three iterations the value of x3 remained same therefore we say that x is equal to 2.706 as the desired solution which is correct to four significant digits thank you